In this special episode of Turlo's Garage, we're gonna be exposing some rear ends. Some hot naked rear ends. Looks like we do have a bit of a plate here that might supply some kind of a clue to what's in here. Okay, so it does say 373, that's the ratio. I don't know, it doesn't really uh, tell us if it's limited slip or not, but there's another piece of the puzzle. So how would you determine if this is limited slip or not? Put some comments down below. Parking brakes off and it is now in neutral, so I can spin these tires. So I'm spinning the right one forward. The left one is going forward as well. So I think that's a pretty good indication that this does have a limited slip axle in it. So what if, what if we spin the, uh, the input yoke to the axle? What will happen? I'm spinning the input yoke. I guess that's reverse. I'm going backwards. So that, that tire's turning backwards. Uh, the left tire is also turning backwards. So I think that's a, a pretty good indication. This at least has some kind of positive traction rear end. Pull this diff cover and take a look in there next. Bit of a toasty day. All right, let's uh... let's drop this diff cover, see what we can see in here. Maybe we should clean some of the dirt off. Nah, maybe not. Ooh, I think, oh, I think that is factory fresh. And, oh, I did break it loose. I thought for sure I just stripped the bolt. I don't think it's been opened up before. So what I like to do, is take these bottom ones out first. Is that what they use at the factory or was that a shop that did that? I don't, I don't know. So the idea is we're gonna take the bottom out, we'll loosen the top and then pop the cover back a little bit to let the oil drain out. Some kind of sensor up here at the top. I got this last one here, I'm just gonna loosen it. That is glued on there, good. Sorry, this might take a while. I'm gonna have to get a bigger pry bar. Oh, almost there. Big pry bar to pop it loose a little bit. There we go. That's uh, got some stuff coming out now. That, that actually, that oil looks pretty clear. That looks pretty good. 180,000 miles on it. <sighs> what in the world, man? That is, yeah, that's, that's glued on there. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. We're gonna take a look at this rear differential. If you see something that I should be concerned about or don't know about or don't mention, Put, it, put a note in the comments. Although by the time I post this video, this is gonna be all back together. But uh, I don't have a problem taking it all apart again. So there is a, a ring on here. So that's what that electronic sensor is at the top. That is reading the, the gear or the sprocket on the ring gear. But I'm looking at here in this differential and this looks like it does not have any kind of limited slip. It is an open differential. Very, very surprising that it's an open differential. So normally they'll put the, we saw there's that tag that had the gear ratio on it. Normally they'll put it on the axle here too. Yeah, or on the, the ring gear. Oh, the brakes are on. But you can see we got a part number. Uh, the last part of the part number is 373. I'll see if I can get in there. The last couple digits right after the part number 373 just like the tag on the differential this is probably i'm guessing this is maybe some kind of date code so normally i would take some brake cleaner clean this out real good uh the oil that came out of there looked really good already so i don't even think i'm going to do that i'm just there's a, a a magnet down here at the bottom i wiped off with a rag just to get just to get the metal just to clean it off and then i got to clean off the mating surfaces on the diff cover and the differential, I'm gonna put the differential cover back on and probably fill it with a, a good quality synthetic gear oil because I don't know when I'm gonna do this again. Probably never. So that was a 100% correct, 100% accurate description of the differential and the rear axle in the Liberty, except it is completely wrong. Few days after filming that, I opened up the glove box in the Jeep here and I found this. Nope, not the key to the wheel locks. Not the touch of paint, this label right here, which reads, this car equipped with locking type differential. 
This is a limited slip differential. It's called a track lock. There's clutches in here right behind the spider gear. There's clutches in here right behind this spider gear. You can't see them when it's all together. This looks just like an open differential, but the open differential actually has a different shape. We are now under the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee w, WK, I think. WK. I thought this had an electronic locking differential. Uh, looks like I'm wrong on that too. I, I don't know Jeeps. I'm just making it up as I go. So, uh, pull the diff cover and see what this looks like inside. This does have the uh, Quadra, it's a Quadra Drive 2 system. Ugh. Well, at least my wrench won't rust now. All right, well, I'm gonna smell like gear oil now for a couple days. There we go, that looks, doesn't look too bad either. I can't really, I can't really get the camera in there, but right in here, yeah, I can't really turn the, spin the tires either. But this looks like, this it looks like a regular open differential. There is a sensor here. Uh, I know there's ABS sensors. There is a wire right here. That does go to an ABS sensor. This does have rear disc brakes. It does have an ABS sensor on each wheel. Uh, there is also some kind of sensor here too on the rear differential. Uh, we've got the carrier bearings there and there. That's what keeps this whole assembly in place. So this has to be some kind of, I, I don't know if this is a sensor to lock the rear axle. I know the Quadra Drive 2 system works with the ABS sensors to lock the wheels. So if you got a tire spinning, it'll lock the tire that's spinning to send power to the tire that's not spinning. Guess that all this is all part of the same system here. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I can tell you it works fantastic off-road. So it's surprising the electronical gadgetry or wizardry in here. All the electronicals that work together. So let's go take a look at a couple other axles. I do have a Chevrolet one though. This is in a Blazer, 96 Blazer, S10 Blazer. Uh, this is kind of the same you'd find in Chevy trucks, SUVs, a lot of Chevrolet vehicles. All right, I got one strip bolt. Perfect. Always gotta be one difficult one. This is a General Motors G80 positive traction rear end, a rear axle. Uh, this is what they, this is an exploded view because it exploded. Uh, you can see, instead of having uh, gears in here, spider gears, uh, you can see there's a, a clutch system. There's actually spider gears that floated around the outside. That's what, that's what these are right here. Let's get, uh, get some of these parts out of the way here. There's a pin. There's a pin that would go through the center, but you can see the clutches and discs in here, which would lock this, lock this axle together. There's uh, uh, mechanisms in here to help. Wow, that's uh, seen better days. Mint, put some, we weld that up and make it solid. Even the carrier bearings, the carrier bearings are coming out. This whole thing is toast. But there's uh, different mechanisms in here. There's different mechanisms in here to help that lock in. There is the uh, the main locking pin right here that would go through these spider gears that would go around the outside of this and then you've got this section here in the middle with these clutches when it's activated these clutches would lock i believe this pushes out and it locks together uh something like that but uh, that's the problem with these limited slips especially these gm ones is lots of videos you can look all over youtube find lots of videos of these exploding and that's what happened to this one lots of carnage I wasn't even doing anything crazy either. Oh, there's a C-clip in there. We talk about C-clips. I don't think I can get it. There's too much debris in the way. Anybody interested in a slightly used Chevrolet GM G80 positive traction rear axle? Mint condition, ran when parked. Don't try to lowball me. I know what I got. So, so far we've mostly been looking at uh, Dodge, Mopar, Jeep, General Motors axles. There's usually a diff cover that comes off the back. There is another style of axle that is Somewhat common with uh, with vehicles similar to the Ford 9-inch where the whole center section comes out. I think the Chevys in the 50s, 50s, late 50s, 60s, I think some of them had the same type of axle. So it's another type of axle you'll come across. This is a, a center section from a Ford 8-inch. It's similar to a 9-inch, it's just a little bit smaller. That's what we ran in the, the Pinto race car. This has what's called a mini spool in it. And this is actually, this is actually locked solid. There is, oh, there's a spider, evicting the spider. 
So the way this would work, you take these bolts out, this whole center section comes out. There would normally be uh, spider gears in here or planetary gears or w whatever you want to call them in here. That is replaced with just a, a block of metal that just goes straight across. So this is lock solid. No matter what you do, this is, it's not moving. There's no, both the rear tires are going to, both the rear wheels are going to be spinning at the same speed at all times, no matter what. Let's talk about markings. So most, most gears have markings on them. It will tell you the gear ratio. What you can do is count the teeth on the ring gear, count the teeth on the pinion gear. That's right in, right in here. There's another gear right in here. Okay. So there's a gear down in here, the pinion gear. You can kind of see it turning right up, right up in this area right here. So you can count the teeth on the pinion gear and count the teeth on the ring gear. And that will give you the rear axle ratio, but usually you can find it with the markings on here as well. So nine by 32, we've got this marking nine by 32. Hopefully you can see that. So that's nine teeth on the pinion gear, 32 teeth on the ring gear. I believe if you do the math, that comes out to 355, which is what we ordered for this. And that's what we're running in this car. I hope you enjoyed this video, learning about rear axles, differentials, stuff like that. I can, I hope you learned something. I can tell you, I learned quite a bit in making this video um, over the course of a long period of time and having to redo stuff repeatedly, taking things apart, learning how they work, fixing old cars, fixing junk cars. Uh, if you like content like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I will see you in the next video.